Um, as much as we like and we see the trend of people living in their homes as long as they possibly can, here's, here's somewhat of the reality. They're living in a home that's been theirs for 30 or 40 years. Mm-hmm. It was designed with the laundry room in the basement and the, and the bedrooms upstairs, and there's stairs between all those different levels. And even though they might be able to maintain life pretty much on the first floor, the reality is it's not going to be a conducive environment for them to succeed. We are looking forward our way. Hi, this is Brett. And with me today in the 511 Studio, Studio C, is Carol. How are you? I'm good this morning. How are you, Brett? I'm doing great. Doing good. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. We are very excited to have a very special guest with us today, our friend Joel Robel, who is the Director of Business Development for Ohio Living Westminster Thurber. Joel, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, Carol and Brett, it's great to be here. Thanks. Good. Yeah. And, you know, we all know the difficulty in the housing market across the country, but Columbus in central Ohio is in a particularly bad spot. Um, no housing stock, everyone wanting an alternative basically a new place to reside. But there are many facets to the housing picture. Today, we're going to discuss the multi-unit senior housing communities. There are so many different topics. So I'm, I'm kind of making a list here for us to go over. It's a complex question. And we thought we wanted to focus in on just a few areas, or else we'd be here all day long, needless to say. Um, and so let's just take a look at these specific areas. An overview of senior housing and in particular, what has been created at your location at Ohio Living Westminster Thurber, affordability of senior housing in the various levels, how can senior housing lead to a healthy lifestyle, issues like loneliness and isolation and physical needs, and how residential locations can decrease all that stress that seniors and their family have today. And how has the pandemic changed senior housing in the short-term and long-term planning? So let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. So, you know, the best start would be to, you know, look at an overview of, you know, what is Ohio Living Westminster Thurber and and senior housing in general? Well, Brett and Carol, again, it's so good to be with you. And I really thank you for exploring the topic of senior housing. Um, Just as a quick review, um, Ohio Living Westminster Thurber is a non-for-profit retirement community, and we've been serving adults since 1965. And over these past five years, we have expanded and grown. We now consist of four buildings with distinct neighborhoods of care. And so for our uh, listeners, I mean, we are what's called a life plan community, which means that we have the ability to assist somebody to move through the continuum of care that a person may need as they move through their retirement years. Um, And so on any given day, we're going to care for about 440 individuals who might be living in our independent living apartments or assisted living apartments. We also have a memory care neighborhood and, of course, our long-term nursing. And we do have some folks that come to us just for our rehabilitation. So, Brett, you said, uh, you know, uh, the, the housing choices, and there's a myriad of senior housing choices. And so... Some senior communities are just standalone, independent, or assisted living communities. And you've got other ones that have like a combination. They might be a little bit of independent and assisted, or they might be assisted living and a little bit of memory care. And of course, you've got some that are only caring for those that are just needing long-term nursing care, which we typically would call a nursing home. Right. And so today, consumers have just a lot of choices. So really, our original thought of independent, assisted, and nursing or skilled care, eh, we've expanded a lot. One of the areas that I've really looked at at, for for seniors is that notion of aging in place. Um, So someone who would stay home as long as they could, getting the care and resources that they need. But how has this really changed the overall picture of senior housing? And is it different for somebody who's 55 as opposed to 75? Well, Carol, I agree with you that With the expansion of home care services across America, consumers today really have a fourth option, and that is to stay home. Now, home care is growing by leaps and bounds. Just to be clear, though, there are really two types of home care services, services that come to a person's home because of a nursing or therapeutic need, and usually that's going to take place after a hospitalization or a dramatic health change. These healthcare services typically are provided through 
Medicare or private insurance for a short amount of time. And I can't emphasize that enough. A lot of people think that these are services that are going to continue for a long time. This is just for a short amount of time. And those nursing and therapeutic needs have to be ordered by a physician. A second type, though, is home care services for consumers who have ongoing needs with things like bathing, medication management, mealtime assistance, or companionship. These services come into the home for a few hours, multiple times a week, and these types of services are not covered by Medicare and medical insurance. Typically, these are services that are paid privately and and or if someone has a long-term care policy with a health care provider or writer. I think these... Um, I think for those that are on the younger side of retirement age, home care services are paid privately. Mm -hmm. Um, They're not able to tap into that Medicare benefit. But for those that are 75 plus, medical services through home care offer the elderly adult a greater chance to stay home before they really need to make a transition to a higher level of care. And, And Carol, from my perspective, you know, when a person needs ongoing help to manage life's affairs for an extended hours every day, that really is an indicator that that person has moved beyond home care services and should really explore a senior living community. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and a lot of that is discussing it within the family too. Don't you think? I mean, it's one of those, yes, you have somebody coming in, but the family's still involved. Right. And, and is it a family decision to go, you know what, we can't do this anymore because our schedules can't allow it. Is there a better alternative that we also see mom and dad or mom and or dad have a better situation? Right. Those Mm -hmm. families that are close together and can divvy up some of the responsibilities to help their parent age well at home, great. But if you're not around and you're relying upon a a service to come in, it can get a a little bit more challenging. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, in taking it from a family's perspective, you know, first thing on everyone's mind is cost, <laughs> and the families involved with that, as well as the 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 people that are directly affected, the mom and dad. I mean, what do seniors need to consider when dealing with the cost of residential locations? Can can seniors maintain a safe lifestyle without a huge bank account? You know, um, it, it's because there's so many choices out there. There are so many senior housing options, so the costs are going to vary greatly. Right. Which is an advantage it if is. you think about it because you can shop. You can. You yeah. can shop, and as you shop, you need to compare apples to apples. Right. Um, so let me unpack this maybe a little bit. I mean, I wish it was easier, and I, and I guess the reality is that every senior community out there is going to offer a different package and have different amenities. Um, when I highlighted earlier about that standalone independent living community, that is really the low end price point for people to come. But unfortunately, they're not going to offer you a whole lot of care services. And so when you're moving, you need to look at, well, what are they going to provide? Are they providing housekeeping? Are they providing some amenities that are helpful to me compared to maybe the place that has a lot more options Mm -hmm. like meal plans and staff on premise 24 hours a day and bus transportation and activity programs because it all varies. And so so that price – So you've got to be really honest with yourself, don't you? Yeah. What do you need? Right. What do you need? And and based on what dollars you have, right. you'll be right. able to find hopefully mm-hmm. the right choice that's right. going to provide that for you. Right. Um, but Brett, I appreciate you bringing up the subject about uh, senior housing, though, because there are lots of choices for people who have lower income. For consumers who um, have lower income or lower assets, I really encourage them to connect with their area agency on aging. These are folks that Mm -hmm. can provide a good list of specific communities that accept that type of payment choice. Um, And they're also going to be able to provide that consumer with a list of home care communities or home care services that can provide that or even programs that are offered for low-income seniors. But in your question, you also asked about a little bit about, you know, staying home or staying safe. And as much as the trend is for people to stay home for as long as they possibly can, here is my um, my slant to that. Because um, as much as we like and we see the trend of people living in their homes as long as they possibly can, 
here's here's somewhat of the reality. They're living in a home that's been theirs for 30 or 40 years. Mm-hmm. It was designed with the laundry room in the basement and the, right. and the bedrooms upstairs, and there's stairs between all those different levels. And even though they might be able to maintain life pretty much on the first floor, the reality is it's not going to be a conducive environment for them to succeed. And even if they want to leave, most likely they're leaving a home with stairs to get out. So as much as we want people to live in their own homes for as long as possible, maybe bring in home care, I'd also encourage people to look at their home from an audit standpoint. Is there enough lighting, especially in areas where um, they're traveling and we don't want them to fall? Looking at the bathrooms, maybe grab bars, maybe a raised toilet, and, and even possibly removing the old tub and putting in a shower. So today, um, you know, Americans have lots of choices, and it's whether they want to stay home or whether they want to move to a designed senior community, there's going to be some costs involved. Right. You, you know, I think the one thing that has happened over the past 20 years is that information like what we're talking about is much more readily available. Uh, 20 years ago, my mother passed away, who was my dad's caregiver, and so I became his caregiver. He really wanted to stay home, and so it took a long time for me to make that happen because the information wasn't out there. And even at that point in time, there were agencies who couldn't work with us because we weren't at a low-income level. Um, But I was out doing all my networking with friends who were – working with parents who were in need of of caregivers. So I think we're so lucky now to have that and have groups like Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging helping people get this information because there are private companies that do that, Mm -hmm. that um, that may be wonderful. I don't know them. Um, I do know COAAA, and they do a phenomenal job, and they're very good about having – information that is not uh they're not making money on that information right so it's very um uh, fair fair yes um fair and and equitable for yes, everybody. For everybody right um so and, and for those consumers though i mean yes the internet can provide you lots of things but how people describe a community still requires them to make the phone call and and if possible go and tour it because what you see on the internet is a piece of the information. You may need to get more. Mm-hmm. Right. Very camera friendly. <laughs> yes. In most oh, parts, yes. of course. Oh, I mean, yes. If you think about when you when you go on vacation and the hotel room and it's like, wait a minute, that isn't the picture of the hotel room yes. <laughs> online. You yeah. know, so yeah, there of course it's gonna be the best is gonna be shown. But you're right. It, it's that go in, talk. Get a feel for the location. Get a feel for what part of town it's even in. Are you comfortable with that? Right. 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 Yeah. Right. So it, when we were uh, preparing for our session today, I read an interesting article that stated that senior living is changing to a hospitality-based design as opposed to that hospital look. Um, communities have workout rooms, activity rooms, patios and balconies. Um, is that the goal? Is healthy living the new goal? You know, Carol, it's it's so interesting in the industry that I work in. Um, senior living trends come and go, but definitely the trend that's around right now is healthy living. So it's definitely going to stay. And so when we talk about building design and amenities and all of that, that is definitely the direction that we're going and we can see that because you can – when you walk into a senior community today, the interior design is much different. Mm-hmm. Rooms and spaces are designed specifically. And in many ways, senior communities are looking more like resorts and hotels with nice amenities, which right. is which is great. Right. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned the fitness center. You know, and many of our senior communities today are installing fitness equipment, which is great. But they're also in, installing equipment that is more senior friendly. Right. And um, those quality communities, though, are also then taking it one step farther, and they're having a fitness instructor available to the resident so that they can be educated on how to use the equipment and maybe put together a fitness routine that's going to help them reach their fitness goals. So when you talk about hospitality-based design, I think it's all about eliminating that institutional feel of that traditional senior community. 
But Carol, let me take it one step further. And, and you know, for those who do it well, they create something called a vibrant, thriving community life. You know, Maslow has pointed out to us that people have a basic need to belong and to be part of something. Right. And this hospitality-based design is helping uh, us focus our senior communities to be beautiful buildings, nice designs, appealing amenities. But it's more than that. It is helping them focus on something called becoming a skilled community builder. And I just want to talk about that for a moment because I think when we go and shop and look at pros and cons of different places, Mm -hmm. a senior community that is a community builder is simply this. They're a quality senior community that will be committed to creating environments where people belong and where individuals are honored no matter what challenges they might be living with. In many ways, that hospitality-based design is focusing on individuals who live at the senior community, but management is coming right alongside those residents, and they're making a partnership to create programming to engage in the six dimensions of whole person wellness. And we've been talking about fitness, and and that is, you know, that workout room and whatnot. So that's one dimension of this whole person wellness But, you know, when you walk through and you tour a community, you can sense that it's more than just a building design and nice things. It's it's how the feel of that place is. And so those other dimensions that a good quality community is going to create are places where there's intellectual well-being, spiritual well-being, social, emotional, and vocational. So senior communities have a lot to offer and really should be considered a viable option during one's senior years. You know, one of the things that um, many families struggle with is that the parent has sort of been left behind. The children have gotten jobs all over the country. They're busy raising their children. And so now you have a parent who is in that house And maybe they can negotiate the steps, but really don't want to negotiate steps anymore. And you don't want them going into the basement to do their laundry. Um, But I know growing up, we always thought of those old age homes as the place to go to die. Yeah. And now really it is this notion of it's not just healthy living, physical healthy. It really is creating a new community, creating your new village. Right. And I think that Unfortunately, a a lot of us have that stereotypical, it's the old folks' home. Right. But senior communities today are so different, and and they really do want people to move in at a younger age while they're able to, while they can engage and create new friendships and really find new purposes in life. It's not about just retirement and leisure and travel and you know, maybe a few things of interest, but it's really about helping people redirect their energies towards new things. Right. It's not just sitting home watching TV. Right. right. You know, that, and that notion of people having the option of making that decision for themselves so that it's not a child coming in four states away and having to force that decision. So yeah. good. And, and Thank you. The other thing I'll say is, It's a process. Right. I mean, to really be successful in retirement, you need to plan for it. But it is not that family member coming in and making a decision all of a sudden. We experience people who look at our senior community, and it could be years before they kind of say, yes, this is what I want to do. But they – they're thinking it through. They're looking at all their options. They're they're trying to figure out, well, these are the things that are of interest to me. Your community can provide that. You know, so it's not mm-hmm. just a, a very quick decision. Right. And it goes back to a family conversation, doesn't it? It does. Really. That start the process, but the family realizing, you know, don't force mom and dad into it. Okay, we've got to get you out, get you out of the house by next Christmas. It's not that. But it's like find out from them. Maybe they have – you may not even know what your parents are thinking about. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't and, know what they're thinking about. maybe help them on the process. That It may not be that they want to stay, but they don't want to tell the kids that they're leaving the house that they, that they all grew up in. There, there's oh, something to that too, that right. the kids don't want mom and dad to leave the house because they grew up. Don't sell our home, mom and dad, you know. But it's one of those, but you got to respect your mom and dad's thoughts too. Mm-hmm. So it, it could go both ways. 
It really can. And, yeah. and because, as you pointed out, I mean, we're a transient society now. I mean, who's to say that that son or daughter are well-established somewhere else in the country? And maybe mom or dad finds a community, a senior community that's closer to them. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, one issue we are addressing on the podcast is the role of technology in the lives of seniors, how they use it, how it can serve them. I'm assuming that technology has greatly changed in your community, I'm sure very fast, um, how to communicate with the residents and family members as well as within the facility itself as your residents become – uh, they're getting younger and younger moving in, then that technology has been part of their part of their life from day one, from six o'clock in the morning till midnight. Um, anything new on the horizon? I mean, how have you implemented it so far and, and how is that changing? Well, I agree with you. The senior today is much more sec, uh, tech savvy than they the senior five years ago. Just in five years, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it's right. amazing, yeah. Yeah, and so um, we try the best we can to integrate technology as often as we can, but technology changes so fast. Mm -hmm. Right. And one of the challenges for a senior community is if you hardwire or create portals and all the other kind of stuff, the next software or the next technology that comes along, will it be able to be integrated with what you have? Within a year, <laughs> probably, I can imagine. Right, yeah. right. So so uh -huh. it is tricky. Um, but one of the things that I'm, I, I think I'm proud of that uh, we, we do at Ohio Living Westminster Thurber is, you know, we try to create um, in-house portals. And so um, some of this is real basic, but some of it is going to allow us to move it technology with our residents to the next level. So one of the things that we're doing right now is with this in-house portal is helping them find the information they need. And so um, as simple as having a dedicated TV channel mm -hmm. where they can just tune to one TV channel to catch community news and events for that day and upcoming, or they can do that on their iPad or phone and we have a dedicated web portal so they can go to one space. And then the challenge for us is to sort that information in a way that is helpful for them to find the right. information they're looking for. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, is that we're um, now doing a lot more streaming. And so we're allowing our residents to be able to um, see chapel services and resident meetings and concerts and lectures and to be able to stream that when they might not be able to get there or they're not feeling well that day or – they just don't want to be with a whole bunch of people, but they don't want to miss out on that opportunity. Um, and then the third thing is, is that um, we're, again, back to a basic, but it's one channel for movies because um, especially during COVID, you know, it, it's – you can't have a large gathering of people, um, but maybe we could have a movie and then we could have a chat about right. the conversation or the, the situation that took place. But the other thing is, is that we do use technology on a daily basis. We have an I'm OK check-in system electronically. Um, and so we have a report that we can pull at a specific time to make sure everybody's OK. Um, and what's on the horizon is what's exciting because we're taking the smart technologies and applying them to our residence apartments. So things like the ability to turn on lights, lock doors, some of the appliance packages – with smart technologies are integrated right into them. And so um, as we expand Ohio Living Westminster Thurber, we're going to be building Heritage Point, which is going to open in the spring of 2023. And those apartments are going to be tech-savvy apartments. Um, so that's exciting. But then you think to yourself, well, what about the seniors that are already there? So what we've done, which I think is really cool, is we've set up an apartment in Thurber Tower. We call it our tech apartment. And we've formatted the apartment with Alexa, and we're teaching our residents that they can use Alexa to do lights and other safety features and health monitoring uh, products that are out there all through Alexa. Nice. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if it was going to be Alexa or they were going to call Joel. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> Please, Joel. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. But, you know, technology, it, it, <laughs> as much as I think it's with us forever, I mean, it's helping them, the residents, grow in the knowledge of it, but also using it. And it's fun. All right. And well, so, and, and, you know, we've discussed this in, uh, in other episodes, too, about that intergenerational conversation that all of a sudden the grandkids are, are coming to visit grandma and grandpa 
and they have this smart speaker that's doing all this kind of stuff or they're on the internet and it's this conversation that they can have that I'm doing this too. Right. right. So right. It, it's bringing them almost back together that it's accept the technology yeah. as much as you want to, but know that your generation and generations below you and your family, they're already using it. Might as well. Right. But the idea is that, and we always, I always go back to this. We've used technology in our lives for a long time, different technology, different level of it. We've learned it differently, um, but it's a tool. It's not magic. And we can all learn how to use it. So setting up an apartment that somebody can practice using Alexa is perfect. Yeah. Right. I mean, you test drive it, it. It works. Then you make a little investment and then we can help set it up so that exactly. hopefully it's fun, but it's going to provide safety features for that resident. Yes. I, I have been um, complaining to, to Brett for about a, three weeks now. For the first time I ever, I got a new phone and had to do all the work myself. So instead of this young techie doing it in an hour, it took me a week, but I did it. So, And you're so much more knowledgeable for it, right? Probably so. Probably so. Yeah. Yes. Confidence is built up. You can tackle anything now. Doesn't mean I don't still call it a nasty name. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yes. So needless to say, all of our lives have changed in the pandemic. And the uh, life of our seniors have certainly been a lot more complicated. Um, we were discussing before we started the issues of testing and all that you've had to go through. Family members are frantic to see their loved ones. And, and I, for one, have a, an aunt who I've only seen twice in seven months. And so when I saw her last weekend, it was a blessing. Um any insight on the changes that we need to make to protect our seniors and um, the services and space for each person? What are the kinds of things that you've been able to do or that you see as opportunities that we can all take advantage of? Yeah. You know, it, it's it's been terrible that, uh, you know, COVID has created such a stress on residents and families. Mm -hmm. And, um you know, it's especially for those that are in assisted living and nursing home. Those are the regulated areas of our right. uh, industry. And uh, so, yeah, as you mentioned, seven months of really not being able to see their loved one. And I think the frustrating thing for, for us that work in the senior living world is that government and Department of Health are consistently changing the protocols. And so it's hard to to, to – Communicate it back out to the families and the mm -hmm. residents to 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 offer, but um, I think you know as much as we want them to visit together, um, you know it's it's hard. Um, so the government has allowed us to do porch visits in warmer weather, mm -hmm. but now they're going to allow us to do in house. Um, but it's it's a very restricted area. You can't go to the residents' room. Um, so just to help. Uh, minimize the expectation that, yep, you're going to be able to go in and right. see them. Right. It's really a limited um, location, um, limited amount of time. Um, and the other thing, though, is that us and other senior communities are embracing technology, so we're doing virtual visits as much as we can, um, helping set it up so that the family can connect that way. Um, but I think one of the things, Carol, that I, I guess I want to talk about when we talk about this COVID and this reality that as much as we want to be innovative and tackle this problem head on, the reality with COVID is that we are all social beings. Mm -hmm. And to be void of human contact is really weighing us down and, and causing social and emotional well-being to be unwell. Right. And, and so I think that's one of the, the critical points that we have with COVID. Yeah. Mm. Uh, absolutely. It, it, uh, I've had conversations with those in charge of where my aunt is staying, had conversations um, with uh, directors in uh, a, a friend who is in independent living, but her building's connected to assisted living. So they're under the same lockdowns. And and um, I keep saying they need some help. And they all the, the directors always say, well, we can help them. And I'm like, it, it's not that kind of help. It's it's the decisions to be made, and you need to walk it through with the individual. Things like getting rid of 
items, you know, sparsing things out to family members because they know their days are, you know, they're they're working through the end of their life issues and decisions, um, putting things away. You know, I, my, my poor aunt has, every time they send her the medical items that she needs, she has boxes of stuff everywhere. Those decisions can't be made lightly and just with an administrator who is incredibly busy running in and out of their room. And so it's it's really this, they're missing their village. Right. And they're missing their village. And COVID is definitely not making just daily life issues right. easy for people. Right. You know, I was, I was thinking about that. And, you know, when we talk about, you know, loneliness, because earlier we were talking about it's it's about being alone mm-hmm. in, in this situation. Mm-hmm. Um, a philosophy of care that we follow at the Ohio Living Westminster Thurber is called the Eden Alternative. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about that. Uh, the philosophy points out that there's three plagues to the human spirit, loneliness, boredom, and helplessness. Mm. And, Boy, COVID-19 just encapsulates all that, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it, it does. And, yeah. and, and that's exactly what has wow. happened with um, a lot of our seniors and, and residents. They feel helpless. They feel bored because they can't connect in as much as they want. And that loneliness has set in. Um, as I'm thinking about it, you know, principle three uh, speaks of loneliness. It says, loving companionship is the antidote to loneliness. Elders deserve easy access to human and animal companionship. Mm-hmm. And and so when I I think about that, I mean, it's really the 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 direct care workers in these senior communities that is the lifeblood. Oh, absolutely. Right. And they're replacing family because family's not able to come in. And as much as we'd like COVID to go away, um, it's going to be with us for quite some time. Right. And I um. Now, I was thinking about this because it's the direct care worker that's making a difference for that senior. Mm-hmm. Conversation. They're, they need people to interact with. And that, that puts a new level of responsibility for our care workers. Um, but the other thing I was thinking about was, you know, when I don't know if you remember, but when we first got into COVID, like a few weeks into it, you know, we were talking about that frontline worker and whatnot, and we were calling them heroes. Exactly. Heroes work here and all that. Well, you know, we're now, what, seven, eight months into this thing, and it's going to continue on for a lot longer. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe we want to rethink about who is the hero that's working in the senior community. It's really that direct care worker. Exactly. The one who is constantly interacting with, taking the place of family, helping conversations, helping that person and so I just throw this out to you that um, I'm not sure how any one of us define a hero, but uh, I think of our care workers, and I think they're a hero. They're helping everyone reach optimal living. Right. And um, in place of the family that can't be there, they're it. Right. And and we're recognizing that in hospital workers because, unfortunately, so many of our COVID patients have passed on. And it's a hospital worker, nurse, or technical person, whoever, is the end-of-life connection for them. Um, For those seniors living in different residential situations, um, maybe we haven't hit that critical step of when they've passed, but every day is a critical spot for them to be in, and they need that connection. Yep. So all of those uh, gifts and things we were giving to hospital workers at the beginning of the pandemic, now we need to think about Christmas and thanking our everyday heroes That's who are right. taking care of our loved ones. Good point. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we've covered that this is a complicated issue. Housing is, uh, particularly if the individual is unable to make decisions for themselves. We covered that as well, too. Um, do you have some words of wisdom for our listeners, whether they're seniors themselves Family members reaching that senior age, family members that, uh, you know, that, that uh, are planning on discussing this next time they see mom and dad, whether it's the holidays or not. They just know that we got to start this conversation. Yeah, I, I think my encouragement, Brett, would be for individuals or families to start the process early, explore all the options, and to implement the plan sooner than later. You know, I've been in this industry for 30 years, and I— I often hear from those who make the decision to move into a senior community 
And they'll say something like, I wish I would have made this decision mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Brett, there is, should be, there really should be enjoyment at all stages of life. And with so many senior living choices available today, consumers should find the one that best fits their needs and move. I mm-hmm. mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, if, the, if something fits your needs and you like it, you should move. Don't wait for a crisis. Move when you're in control of your own decisions. And the last thing is, is I really think people should look at a senior community as a place to not only live, but to grow and to continue to be engaged in life. For another 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. Joel, thank you. This has been yeah. phenomenal. All of this information, the insight you've given us is just, it's going to help so many of our listeners. And I want to remind our listeners that if they have questions about Ohio Living Westminster Thurber and any other resources that we know of, we have added those to our uh, podcast show notes for their convenience. And Joel's giving us some information to add to our list of things we've already put together. So listeners, um, reach out. They are, we are all always willing to talk to you about these subjects and get information to you. So thank you again for your time today. Thanks, Joel. Thank you both.